in my dreams, I visit these areas. It's one of the places that are very close to my heart. It's my childhood playground. As young boys as we were growing up, we would actually take a trip down and we'd sleep over here, we'd make fire, we'd camp. This Wena is Simtendo. This is home. My name is Sinekoko, which means we have pride. I've been doing my level best to make sure that people are proud of the rich biodiversity that they have within this area of Pondele. Pondele and Center of Animism is a very special place and it's a beautiful place. Very small, but has got a high diversity, about 2,200 indigenous plant species, 200 of which are not found anywhere else in the world, but only in this area. As a little boy growing up, this is what we would eat, because you leave your, your home very early in, in, in the morning, coming to the field to look after the cattle. And, and you had to learn from the elderly boys how to differentiate between the poisonous and, and the edible plants. So, if you know your trees, you never go hungry. This is Clivia robustia. In our local language, we call it Mayime. Let it stop. And the use is mainly to chase away the evil spirits. Hence, it's called Maime because if the tokoloshe comes to your house and it's there, so they, they will always, they will go back, they will stop, they won't enter your house. So it is very popular as a magic plant. I've traveled the world and I've seen how special and unique our area is. And that has given me passion to stand up and fight for what we have. Indigenous plants are very central to the culture, to the lifestyle, to the language of the people in many ways. Can you check this one? That's so. one, yeah. Pilancy. Okay, let's check. Nonte is one of the local guides. And because she has been very concerned about the protection of the land in, in Ponderland, that has motivated her to find out more because she has been hearing people talking about environment, environment, environment. And she's busy now trying to grasp and, and, and to understand more. The aim of the stewardship project is to give people an opportunity to be stewards of the environment or to protect their own environment for their own benefit and for the benefit of the future generations. There's definitely something wrong with the education system because largely we are seeing more and more young people losing touch with heritage. My plan is to work with the herbalists to document their knowledge of the biodiversity, put that in a book for the young people to, to access this information. Oh, let's see, Katin. Okay, I guess so I'm going to say, well, it isn't just no more cool. John, go. I see, quite a no. Yes, but I couldn't ever come back. I could have a glinda, who pelanga, who was with the end out. You got crumbs away to bang a wapa corner lap, Ababa leg lay over as you and Alumetto, a baby bantuin. Sika Malaw is well. Labater, yeah, but leg lega could look at the service in the world of one of the Yeah, this is one of those that the late dog tam. And Alam Simang was championing in terms of the defense against HIV AIDS. This used as immune booster. 
when you interact with these herbalists and they share the knowledge they have of these plants, you, you then begin to feel that condolence of animism is actually a living pharmacy, which is right out there on their doorstep. The biggest threat to the opponents of animism is the mining. The mining will be located within one and a half kilometer of the high water mark. Those red deserts, that's the area that the government has issued the, the mining license for. The majority of the people here, they are opposed. Looking into the water, you can actually see the black sands on the edge and also underwater. So that's, that's your titanium deposit. The driving force behind mining is the need to make more money. It is not a blessing at all for this area. It is a curse. These red sands are also very special places, they are heritage sites because we found within them the Sangoen Stone Age tools. You have these sharp pointed knives that they would use during the late Stone Age tool that were very designed for skinning the animals as the people living here were hunter gatherers by then. There are actually hundreds of graves around these red dunes that they want to mine. The people still visit those graves as well as they know the spirits are lying there. The mining wants to blow these things away and become nothing. I went to Mr. Kambe because I know how passionate he is about protecting the land. Mm. Listening to an elderly man like Mr. Gampe, who's prepared to die for this land, is what gives me the passion to carry on fighting. The biggest problem of the young people today is that they are not given the opportunity to listen and to learn from the elderly people. Yes, I'm Sean. So Tata when I am from the end, I'm the now we're showing our team. So Sean, so I limba la zongu when I limba la zongu. Sean, you're the best. Yeah. This one here is the forest bamboo. And the, and the forest bamboo is, has got many, many uses. The little boy told me that this one is for toothache. They will crush this and, uh, and boil it. So that decoction, you actually you use that to, to gargle and it will sort out the toothache. This big tree here has got the string lafig, which has wrapped its roots around it, and what it does is squeezing life 
out of this big tree. Ultimately, the tree that has given life to the strangler fig will die. So that same thing applies to human beings. Mother Earth has given them a chance in life of having the oxygen and all the food and all that. But once people are established, they think they are powerful enough, they want to destroy Mother Earth. My first few young people is that they must learn from the elderly people, the heritage that they have. The society, we have to begin to value our heritage and value what Mother Earth has to offer us.